are baby snakes more dangerous than their adult counterparts? It's an old question, one I thought I knew the answer to, but it turns out I was wrong. Before we get started on this video, please do like and subscribe. Uh, I've been listening to all your suggestions for other things I should do on this. I hear you and I will do things that are not snake related as well, I promise. When I first started working with Venomous over 30 years ago, the idea was that baby snakes should be more feared than their adult counterparts because they would not dry bite. They hadn't learnt yet how to uh, meter out the amount of venom they were giving. So if you got bitten by one, it would unload everything it had and give you a nasty wet bite that was going to be trouble. About 15 years ago, all that changed. All of a sudden, that was an old wives' tale with no evidence. But what does the scientific literature actually say? That is so beautiful. <laughs> it is a little king in miniature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, let's start off with a big idea of whether baby snakes are more dangerous than their adult counterparts. Clearly not. You know, uh, a snake that is 30, 40, 100 times the size of a baby is going to have bigger venom glands, higher venom yield, therefore a bite could be substantially more dangerous. But the more interesting question is perhaps whether baby snakes can in fact control the amount of venom they give. Can they give a dry bite? And looking through the literature, that bit is more cloudy than I thought. Let's start off with what a dry bite is. So if you are bitten by a snake, it can be a wet bite, that is one that injects venom, or a dry bite, one that doesn't. And that can be surprisingly common. It varies from about 14% of bites up to 80% in some species. And why? Why would a snake not deliver venom in a bite? Well, there's lots of reasons. Number one of which is that venom is extremely costly to the animal to develop. It requires this cocktail of different chemicals, all of which have to be uh, developed inside the body of the animal and cost an inordinate amount of energy. It takes a long time for them to recuperate. <laughs> oh yeah! Get that, Mark. Wow. Good job I wasn't wearing my flip-flops. If you look at my boot, it is absolutely dripping with cobra venom. Snakes that have been milked for their venom may take 14 days to recover completely their venom stores in their glands, but in the paper Current Knowledge on Snake Dry Bites from Pucker et al, it's been shown that protein synthesis is maintained 30 to 60 days post venom extraction. That being the case, no snake wants to give up its venom easily. A dry bite can happen because there is little or no venom in the glands at the time of strike. It can be because the venom glands are diseased and there's some kind of problem that is affecting them directly. It can be due to the fangs being obstructed. And that can happen because of calcification of the fang, which is much more common in older snakes. And it could be due to the victim moving away at exactly the right moment, or perhaps wearing clothing or boots or something that gets in the way of that venom uh, being injected. But then there's the most interesting reason why venom might not be delivered into another animal, and that's known as venom metering. I've found about a dozen different sources which show that snakes can decide whether they want to inject venom or not, and decide how much venom they would like to inject. And that can vary tremendously. So it can be down to certain kinds of rattlesnake, for example, having a small prey item in, in front of them and actually thinking, well, yeah, only needs a, a little bit of the juice to, to knock it down, so I'm not going to waste it. Um, or it could be a, a much bigger prey item and they think, yeah, well, I, I need a, a good quarter of the good stuff to knock that down. And so, whether it's conscious or not, they meter out their venom uh, into the prey animal. And that becomes more complicated when you're looking at a defensive strike. So it's been shown in half a dozen different species that certain snakes will give more or less venom depending on the amount of threat they feel they're under. So I found this amazing paper by William Hayes et al that compared to predatory strikes, defensive bites involve greater variation in venom expenditure. So neither definitively more or definitively less. But if you've got a snake that is feeling properly cornered, feeling as if its life is at threat, then it will unload as much venom as it can because it has no reason to keep a hold of it. If on the other hand, it's just trying to drive something away that is a casual threat, it may deliver no venom at all. And that is a classic metered 
dry bite. The snakes aren't the only kinds of animals to do this. So there's lots of the, uh, the anemones, the corals, the jellyfish, arachnids will do it. I've been in the middle of the jungle, miles and miles away from any help and got stung on the finger by a, uh, a black forest scorpion, one that could have done me a lot of harm. And I can remember the whole crew sat there in terrified silence, waiting for something to happen, thinking, how are we gonna do an evacuation when we've got no heli landing site, when we are days and days walk from anywhere? It was a pretty terrified few minutes, but then after half an hour or so, I've had no systemic reaction whatsoever, not even any pain at the site. And it was classic that I had a dry sting. And as I've said, that can equate to as many as 80% of defensive stings in some species. Now, do hatchlings or baby snakes do these dry bites? Well, that's where we get much more woolly and fuzzy. So I have a couple of papers here that are saying, you know, the evidence is in, that definitely doesn't happen, that is an old wives' tale. But then I've got another couple of very, very recent papers. This one here from a 2020 paper, most dry bites result from a deliberate decision to conserve venom and snake behavior is age related. The age of a snake directly influences the likelihood of it delivering a dry bite. Adults are far more judicious than juveniles and will therefore more often deliver a dry bite if they perceive that they are under threat, which usually provides them with enough time to escape. In these cases, the dry bite is intentional. Neonates and juvenile snakes are known to not control venom metering and usually empty their glands during the bites. So this is 25 years after those classic papers saying the vote is in. It definitely doesn't happen. It's an old wives tale. And that's really interesting because I can't see any kind of experimental evidence here that is proving this, that this happens. But I also have half a dozen other papers where they're looking at thousands and thousands of dry bites, uh, trying to figure out what the cause, the effect of them are. And none of those papers deal with this question about whether juveniles can deliver a dry bite. So I'm looking at the evidence, thinking this was gonna be a slam dunk, and it isn't. You know, there are certainly some reasons why juvenile snakes would be more likely to give up their full load given the opportunity. There are reasons why older snakes may not be able to deliver a full load and uh, why they may be more cautious giving all that venom away if they don't need to and delivering a dry bite if they can. So I'd really hoped that this, my first piece dealing with the scientific literature, was going to give me a nice bit of clickbait, being able to tell you absolutely 100% this is what happens. And unfortunately, what I've got to say is that the vote isn't in yet. You know, we have not tested every one of the thousands of different kinds of snakes, both the neonates and the adults, to find out if that whole venom metering for the youngsters and the adults is a thing. So all I can tell you is, if you find a little baby snake, cute as it may look, take it very, very seriously. You know, the venom is just as potent, just as strong. In fact, in some of these papers, it suggests that ontogeny may lead to more intense, more toxic venom for the babies. So just because they're little doesn't mean you take them for granted. So thank you all so much for watching this. Uh, I have been looking at your suggestions of things to do next and I am on it. So put down in the comments below other things you'd like me to talk about and I will scan through the literature, scan through my back catalogue of stuff that I've done while filming and I will get it out there. Thank you very much and all the very best from me, Stevie B.